Stevens and Jim Buckingham. And uh, let me just show you where the presenters are. Hello, Vance, and hello, Jim. Are you in the same place? Hi. Hi there. Hi, I hear yeah. some background noise. Relatively. Hi. Hi. Well, these are the presenters yep. for the uh, Moodle MOOC. This is Moodle MOOC 3 on February 23rd, 2014. And it's my youngest daughter's birthday. So it's a very special day for my husband and I. Uh, people are going to be coming in as we go. This is Nellie Deutsch. It's not Vance. So uh, let's uh, get started. If you could add in the chat box where you're from and uh, anything else can anybody hear me hi hi from venezuela hi we've got united arab emirates thank you Ludmilla. good to see you i still hear some background noise i don't know where it's coming from uh jim are you wearing a headset yes you are uh i'm using yeah the yeah. I'm using the mic on the computer. Yeah, me too. So it, I don't know where it's coming from, but uh, maybe it'll just go away. All right. So we've got people from Arizona. We've got Carol from Arizona. And I'm also what? Hassan Palo from Saudi Arabia. Okay, and I see that uh, the conversation seems to be from the pre chat, seems to be here as well. That's what I was just checking. All right, so we're going to get started. We're not going to waste any more time. Uh, Van Stevens and Jim Buckingham will be introducing themselves as they go through uh, the slides. Um, you've got everything you need. If you need me, I'll be in the background here. You've got, I see, uh, PowerPoint. And uh, there we go. If anyone uh, would like to have a good connection, a better one, uh, try to use the WizIQ desktop. If you don't have a Mac, if you have a Mac, you won't be able to use it. So WizIQ desktop. It's for Windows only right now. Okay. Okay, uh, so you seem to be... Are we ready to begin? Yes, go ahead. Can you... Um, we can hear you. Okay, uh, Jim, we might just have to go. Yeah, I'm just letting Jim know we'll we'll go with the slides that are there, and you can just pass over the the ones that are uh, not clear. Is that okay? Mm. Are there, and you can just I, pass I over the, button. I'll give the ones a, that are a stab. We'll see what uh, happens. not clear. Anyway, is that okay? Uh, this is my colleague. Mm, I, I just found the upload button. I'll, I'll give it a, a stab. I'll see what kind of happens. All right. Anyway, uh, this is my colleague in Abu Dhabi, Jim Buckingham, the, in the video window. That's not me. And I'm Vance Stevens. I wrote a little piece for this. I called it the elephant in the fire hose. The elephant in the fire hose. That's interesting. Maybe it gives you the idea of yeah, okay. There we go. The elephant in the fire hose. Okay. Um, the reason I... No, let's see. The elephant in the fire hose. That's interesting. It's maybe it gives you the idea of a python eating an elephant or something like that. But it's, it's not like that. The elephant that I have in mind is the... the um, and of course the fire hose is the uh, proverbial one yeah. where we have blind people because, trying to figure out uh, what the elephant is. So the elephant represents knowledge. And of course the fire hose, we're familiar with that. And, uh, yeah, Jim is uploading so because he, uh, the, you know, the way the slides yeah. render in WizIQ, so, uh, um, he got some overlay and uh, okay. he's uploading a text version of his file. So sure, sure, that's... Uh, uh, anyway. Is it okay? Uh, is, there, is that all right? That shouldn't what be a problem. Today is we're okay. I guess, yes, I hope so. Anyway, uh, right. what we're anyway, doing today uh, is we're, is a multi we're, uh, sorry, a Moodle. Okay, I'm hearing Nelly there. All right, anyway, uh, this is, this is a multi session, which we scheduled. Sorry, a Moodle MOOC. I'm getting confused, Moodle MOOCs and MOOC. This is Nelly's Moodle MOOC 3 session, which we scheduled some time ago on a Sunday, which is the time we usually meet for what we call learning together. And 
we keep it learning together learning together dot net http learning together dot net is uh, a regular meeting space that we keep it's kind of our okay, so, online uh, look we meet every sunday at that time are you familiar that? with it i'm also glad to chat with you on the, uh, distract us a little bit Okay, so uh, anyway, we're going to talk about uh, badges. I'm also Glantix chat. That's where I'm uh, distracted a little bit. We're going to talk about chaos learning, which is what MOOCs are about in a way. I'll get into that in the time I have. I'm going to try to keep this down to 15 minutes at most 20 minutes. And um, I should say that our it's about an EVO session, MultiMook. And the EVO is finished now by, it's a, it ended a week ago. Uh, that's Electronic Village Online. Did anybody participate in that? You can write me in the text chat and I can, are you EVO people? Just, you know, in a smiley face or something. Um, anyway, basically, we call this uh, session uh, Multimook. What was that all about? So that's what Jim and I are kind of thinking. What was it about? It's very complicated, really. That's what the elephant is. The elephant is the thing that everybody has a different uh, perspective on. Hassan, you must be a video guy, so nice to meet you. Okay, well anyway, so also uh, in MultiMook, I uh, encourage people to go to a real MOOC, and the one that I used was Rhizomatic Learning, Rhizo 14. Uh, I don't know if anybody went to that MOOC. If you did, you could maybe put a thumbs up or something. Oh, yes, hi Tom. Thumbs up. And then last the night, EVO I went to see the Rolling Stones. Okay, cool. so anyway, uh, these are the, the things that we yeah. experienced. And then last night, I went to see the Rolling Stones. Isn't that cool? Uh, anyway, I was in Abu Dhabi. Were, uh, Did you see them, Jim? The Ferrari track. No. The Formula One track. Uh, too far away. You know, I'm sitting there at the Rolling Stones <laughs> concert. Thinking, well, well, anyway, they were uh, out at the Ferrari track, for the, days, the Formula One track. About, uh, I, you know, I'm sitting there at the Rolling Stones concert thinking, boy, you know, really, do I have time for this? I, I've got a presentation, you know, two days, and I'm thinking about, oh, what am I, I don't even have it prepared, you know. I mean, I've been thinking about it a lot, but, it, you know, just actually coming down and doing that, I'm a sort of a last minute person. So I got to thinking, this presentation came to me at this concert. Um, performers. The Rolling Stones are kind of like teachers, you know, they, they have a lot of characteristics in common. Uh, they're superstar music performance performers, and here on the <laughs> left slide, been listening to some of their characteristics, they're excellent performance performers. They practice their, they've practiced for decades, I mean, they've been if you're there, you feel privileged to be in the same space. practicing their practice. You know, they've been doing well, their practice. Star teachers are like they've that. touched well, actually, quite a lot of the world's population. And if you're there, you feel privileged to be in the same space with them. Going on. Uh, well, star teachers are like that. You know, we are actually we have superstar teachers now. I'd say Nelly is one of them. Got all kinds of things going on. Uh, um, Dave Cormier is another. The guy who ran the the uh, Rhizomatic Learning 2014. So, uh, Star uh, another person I'll mention here, Shelly Terrell. Some of them are young, they're not and oh, you're too kind like uh, in the text chat. So in any event, star teachers also, they, they could be, you know, some of them are young. They're not seasoned performers like the Stones, but they're sometimes they're up and coming stars. Uh, they, they're sometimes experienced slick performers. They're clearly passionate about what they do. They, they do things second nature, it seems. And they touch hearts and minds because they and to change and young and old people and they're appreciated by anyone who encounters their work either face to face or online or in writing various modalities so anyway that's what I was thinking about while I was kind of listening to some music in the background so um, anyway uh, it used to be didn't, didn't always be that we could meet star teachers very easily we used to have to travel long distances to go to conferences to see them that's because stars you know this this kind of encounter was scarce now that we have online environments things are abundant we, we have a plethora we can we can easily uh, you know in, engage stars you know you could get a few I mean it happens if you look at the left the right hand column and it happens almost daily here. now. You know, a year ago, you could get a few weekly sessions, teachers. maybe, but now it's almost daily. And I wouldn't be surprised if by next year we've got almost hourly opportunities to meet 
star teachers. I'm wondering if we lost audio, if it's just me. If it's just me, I would need to refresh. But if it's not me, I would not need to refresh. So uh, I am going to refresh just to uh, make sure that it's only me that has lost audio. I feel like uh, I'm in the twilight zone here. So let me just uh, pause and refresh. And um, see Gray, uh, and they are uh, and basically what that is is they, they hold the conference every year, and you sign up if you want to um, if you want to present. You just sign yourself. Now these conferences are that way: the CO14 conference, the Connecting Online conference, the MultiMOOC conference. Sorry, the MoodleMOOC conference. Uh, those are, you know, you just sign yourself up. There's a Google. And uh, we used to do that back in, I think actually, we had three Webheads in Action online convergences. I think by the last one in 2009, that's when we actually just said, OK, never mind. We don't want to vet these things. Just people sign themselves up. We had great conferences. People were stars. We met so many stars that way. And um, K-12 to is another one where um, I, I, I think actually they have to be accepted. But it's almost like just signing yourself up. So they. Encourage people to present. These are this is a, a big change that's happened. Uh, that's why there's so much going on in the network. Really, coming to that in a minute. But uh, another thing, I, I was called upon the other day to give a talk on meaningful learning to a, a, an all-day workshop, or maybe it was two days. But at the end of that workshop, they wanted the the organizers asked me to come and talk on meaningful learning. Now, and they said, I don't have a, a short time, you know, a quarter hour or something like that. And I've got to make that meaningful learning. How do you do that? Uh, I finally figured out that, actually, it's the, I was asked to talk to them. But what if I talk with them? So you can see in this slide, this is a hangout. You can see, very small, I'm, I'm afraid. But there's, you can see the audience in the auditorium. I was actually able to talk with them. And the idea is to give them, to model, you know, what. Uh, rather than me being the sage on the stage, um, I would want to, you know, I, I, I wanted to make sure I modeled uh, uh, something that would include them in the, in the dialogue. It would be really nice if uh, we could have your voices as well, but at least I'm reading you in the text chat. And incidentally, uh, Halima asked if the slides would be available, and they will be. They, they haven't been uploaded yet, but they'll, all my slides slideshare.net slash Vance S. And there's a, a link at the end of this presentation. So anyway, to keep with the musical slide, it says superstar teachers lead with a good riff, but recognize the jazz musician in each student and teaching peer, and invite them to join in to create a learning experience in concert. So that's what I tried to do uh, at that presentation that I did. Uh, the YouTube link is at the bottom. and. Uh, Anyway, it was a challenge. I thought it was a challenge, but I actually did get to engage those people. Anyway, where are the, what about the elephants? Here's, the elephants are in the fire hoses. This is kind of like a fractal diagram. It, if you zoom in, you see fire hoses there. Water is streaming through those fire hoses. And that's where the elephants are. But we all see the elephants in, um, differently, you know, because each of us is, there's, the, the, the elephants represent knowledge. Um, but this is is actually a uh, a diagram of a Twitter network for Rizo 14, the Rizomatic Learning, and, and the idea of the elephants and the fire hoses. I'm just seeing fire hoses. All these links, all these network nodes are actually uh, they've got fire hoses going between them. Knowledge is coming down the fire hoses, and we're trying to figure out what we're trying to describe the elephants that are in there. You know, we can't really see them. It's a situation that's chaotic and unfathomable. Now, here's a question for you. Is that good or bad? Um, do you feel that learning takes place best when teachers are present? That is, to call attention to what's important or to make the process more efficient by relieving 
learners from the distractions inherent in that fire hose? Or do you feel that given that the situation is chaotic and unfath unfathomable, real knowledge starts working through a network, is this exciting and stimulating? Not really a problem? Deep learning can only derive from a meaningful attempt at resolving chaos? That's what George C Seaman says. He says that uh, if a teacher does the filtering for the student, then he eviscerates the learning process. Now, uh, if you look at the left side of the screen, that's maybe toward more simple concepts, whereas the right part is where you really want to learn. And um, learning is something that students do. Uh, teachers are more involved, maybe sometimes they, if, if your learners are not learning on them on their own, then they might be being trained, and that's where you'll focus more on the left-hand side of that slide. Okay. Yeah, that's what's called a screenshot. Jim's wife is doing screenshots. Okay, so anyway, back to elephants. MOOCs are especially geared toward learning in the fire hose because they, there's another uh, quote from the paper I wrote, making, they, they make us uh, make out and piece together a personal process of closure, the part of the elephant parts of the elephant as they, the elephants, stream past. By closure, I mean, you know, when we see things in, in uh, we don't see the whole object. We often fill in the gaps. So that's how you can figure out what an elephant looks like by touching parts of it. So it's also akin to salmon swimming upstream, or I often talk about the berry bush, bush metaphor, where if you want berries, you go to the bush and you take the berries that are easiest to get. That's random access learning. Uh, it, what that means is you don't have to take everything. If you're trying to catch salmon, you catch enough, you catch one or two, you eat them. <clears throat> They're flying through the air. You might not really know what a salmon looks like until you catch one. But anyway, it's not, it's, it's speaking to the fact that um, knowledge is pervasive in these networks and it doesn't come to us in linear fashion. It comes to us in in a, a fire hose of, of information. So connectivism is a theory for the digital age, which George Siemens proposed in 2004. And it's especially capable of addressing needs of individual learners to help learners really learn. And um, because learners learning through networks have knowledge accessible as needed. In other words, uh, the knowledge that exists in the network is available to any node in that network. Anyone who's trying to learn, as long as you're connected, you have access to the knowledge. And since and, the, and that, that knowledge echoes through the network, which means if you miss it here, you're quite likely to pick it up over there because people will be talking about it in the, in the conversations that are going on around the knowledge. Uh, the important knowledge will rise to the top. And the most obscure knowledge, you can even find that because it's all got metadata. And then kind of as an afterthought, I mentioned that this accommodates lurkers. And lurkers are good, as far as I'm concerned. We all lurk. Uh, we're all dedicated to something, but we have limited time to spend on our passions. We have obligations. So uh, yeah. lurkers uh, are called peripheral members, or as lurkers has a connotation to it. I think they're healthy to a community because they connect that community with other communities in which the lurkers might be passionately active. You know, a lurker in your community could be a star in another community. So uh, you have to accommodate lurkers. This came up in RISO 14. They were talking a little bit about lurkers there. Anyway, going back into what I've been doing this year, this is my view of the elephant, what I've been looking at the elephant from the perspective of Electronic Village Online, CO 14, Moodle MOOC 3, which we're doing now, RISO 14, Rhizomatic Learning, and Whatever other, other MOOCs we've been participating in, Jim mentioned in his slides that he's he's done about six of them. So, just in the couple of minutes re remaining, I want to say some of the things that I learned in uh, in the MOOCs I took, uh, because as you know, you can't really say if you take a connectivist MOOC, you don't necessarily set out to learn certain things. You might, but then again, you might not. You're just learning serendipitously as things come along. So one of the EVO sessions was called Crafting the E-Perfect Textbook. And from that session, I got modeled to me a good use of uh, 
Google communities, Google Plus communities. And one of the things I liked about the Google Plus communities, the way Shelley Terrell had it set up, was that she uh, made lists of content objects and put them in a listly uh, array, as you can see there. That was one of the links on the, on the sidebar. This thing over here that uh, says about this community, you can put links there. So one of the links is to the content, which happens to be a listly array. Keeping an eye on the time, I'm going to try to get through this really quickly. Another thing I learned was how to diagram a Twitter tag net by itself. I wrote a blog post whose link is at the bottom of this slide. As I mentioned, all these slides will go online. You'll be able to click on the links. Uh, basically, it, uh, <coughs> the guy whose tool we use is called Martin Hoxie, and his link to his description of how to use that tool is at the bottom of this slide. A third thing. I learned from superstar educator Dave Cormier uh, about how to provoke discussion. By provoke, I mean it's kind of like in-your-face provocative. Uh, the titles of his uh, uh, topics that he took up were um, cheating as learning, how to, how to learn by cheating, um, embracing, oh, sorry, enforcing independence. That was, that's not all contradictions, enforce independence. Uh, how about, is books making us stupid? That, that was uh, one of the most contentious uh, weeks. So <clears throat> just watching Dave work is excellent modeling. Unfortunately, you almost have to be in the MOOC to really understand uh, all the stuff going on around it. And I also learned from this guy named Jim Buckingham about badges. And that was one of our, one of our uh, sessions in our multi-MOOC event. So I'd like to hand over to him. And maybe leave time at the end, if, uh, depending on how long Jim talks. If we have time, maybe Nelly, we could get uh, microphones uh, out to people and ask them uh, if they can sort of just name one thing that they learned in the last six weeks since the beginning of the year interacting with each other. And um, also, if they can name a superstar teacher that really influenced them. So we'll hand that over to, uh, to people. This is my last slide. Uh, this is where you can find my slide share. Oh, I, miss, I made a mistake. It's Vance S. <coughs> oh, okay, I'll make sure that. Anyway, slideshare.net slash Vance S. So you have to have that. And the uh, paper I wrote is linked there. And if you go to the slideshare.net slash Vance S, you'll find the slide and you can link to my paper. Okay. Over to you, Jim. Are you? Thank, oh. Okay, thanks, Vance. Um, before I really get started here, my apologies to everybody for sounding like I'm major plugged up with elephants in my nose. Um, let's see if I can, yeah, okay, great. Just let me go through this to do one quick check to see if my new upload is working. Jim, there's a, there's a tool, is working. a slide thumbnail view. Do you want to check that? Maybe if I could turn it on. Okay. Can you see that? Oh, That's... Okay, never mind. We'll just have to live with it. But the problem well, is... Well, I, I, up, mm -hmm. yeah, I uploaded the new version. I'm just not sure I'm getting the new version. Mm -hmm. okay. It's yours. And then there's okay. two of these. There should be, yes. Uh, there should be two of yours. Yes, there are two of yours right there. Let's see how this one looks. No. <laughs> oh, well. We'll have to manage. Yeah, the problem is that the, the slides, I, I had the same problem. Uh, some of the effects I put on the slides got rendered flat and, uh, and overlaid in odd ways in the, in the with IQ version. So, Oh, that's dreadful. Okay, let's oh, see. Yeah. Let, just bear with me, folks. Yes, yeah, the background. And I'll just, I don't want to have to talk your way through it, which is worse. <laughs> okay, let's manage with this. We'll have to make do. Well, I approach this from the perspective of being a reflective exercise. And so I've taken perhaps a, a less theoretical overview of, of MOOCs in general. And just I'm just going to share with you what I've been doing for the last six weeks. And just in reflecting over it, I was a bit surprised myself as to uh, just what I've been up to which makes this slide probably a, a fitting start. Um, I was pretty surprised to be 
to find myself actually having visited five different MOOCs over the past six weeks. Um, and I'm going to share with you a little bit about, about each and then make some concluding remarks about that. And uh, let's we'll get started here. The, the first one um, is called Badges, New Currency for Professional Credentials. And as Vance told you, I've been uh, presenting in part of the MultiMOOC uh, program a little bit of something on badges. And a lot of this comes from my involvement with this MOOC starting back in September. And this is actually ongoing. This is a major commitment from uh, Mozilla along with Blackboard to pr be promoting the use of uh, badges, uh, open digital badges. And uh, this was, I was hoping you'd be able to read this. I'm not sure if you can. Uh, I, so it's a long-term commitment from me. It's on and off. Um, I've taken a bit of a hiatus from it because I was looking at uh, exploring badges 101. And then, uh, but I thought I'd share with you what I've, one aspect that I was really reflecting a, a lot on, and that's the commitment. Why was I committed to, to, to each of these in varying degrees? And I thought that was interesting. This one's a long-term commitment, like I said, and I was trying to ask myself just why, and I think a good part of that is because of the, the reasons that I've outlined there. Um, really, really a good, good mix of people, all interested in both the theoretical and practical application of badges. Um, it, it's been really well put together, well crafted. Um, even the challenges are really practical. It, in my opinion, it's, it's just a model line instruction. So that's kept me rooted. But the demands for completing stuff is a little bit um, too much for right now. So that's why I've sort of put it on hold. Another one I st stuck my nose into was one, uh, decision skills. And uh, looking at how to make decisions. And this one was interesting. I, I, I made a serious commitment to this. And uh, as a result, uh, despite that, I ended up abandoning it. And you might be interested in like why. I really invested a, a great deal of time at the beginning, assuming a bit of a leadership role. And then realizing that within, within a first group project, it just failed. I just didn't have the involvement. So the, because I saw a lack of commitment from my fellow group members, the thing called reciprocity just wasn't there. So I've had, I spent my time, I felt the return on the investment was poor, so I just moved on. And... This next one was interesting, too, how, how to change the world. I was caught by the, the title, and that's a pretty tall order. And in following that, uh, interesting to find out what, there was, what they were talking about in the end was basically the ethics of how we choose to do what we do and the, the ethos of commitment. Rather ironic to, to be looking at that. But the key to abandoning this is it just wasn't fitting into what I was really interested in at the moment. And it was just too heavy and, and theoretical for me to commit the time. And then uh, the fourth one was this one, badge, Badges 101, which was a very, very simplified version of badges. But I, if anyone's interested, I'd strongly urge you to, to check it out. Um, a great introduction to the potential of badges and, um, and the interest. That, again, a community of people here that were interested in learning about badges and, and bringing to the discussion their own perspectives on how they, they could see being using badges. Um, what else to share with you here? So I ended up completing this. The question came up earlier, have you really completed anything with a MOOC? Well, all of these MOOCs that I've given to you here have been what we would call X MOOCs. These are MOOCs that have been designed with uh, a clear beginning and a clear end. And they, they tend to be scalable, meaning that they can bring in a great number of people. 
but despite that, I still find that there's room within them to build community. If you can find in, in reading the discussion threads, you can find people that are uh, of like mind or similar interests, and you you can network or create a uh, discussion on that. Has anybody had that experience there? Has anybody visited Badge 101 or the other badge program? Is that, a, I'm not sure if that's a question for me there or for Ben. So is information key in for you or is the process or experience of learning? I think it's both. Um, the process, I'm equally intriguing to, to note the different platforms that have been used to deliver these courses and equally intriguing is the methods that are used and the, the ways in generating involvement both from a group point of view and from a, uh, an individual point of view. Um, yeah, we could talk about badges, I'm sure, with a whole separate exercise here. My focus right now is just in looking at, reflecting on the various MOOCs that I encountered and then what I, my level of involvement, commitment to them, and then reflecting on just what, what kind of commitment I gave and perhaps what reasons for why. And the, all, the obviously the last one being the multi MOOC, the one that both Vance and I have been working on. I'd say significantly more uh, with the, in Vance's court than it would be in mine. I was grateful for the opportunity to be invited to participate and present on on badges. But uh, so I, my left commit in here, I found myself limiting myself. Um, I was prepared to assume the role of a co-moderator there, but unfortunately, we didn't get the that reciprocity that perhaps I was hoping for. We got limited feedback, and as a result, I think key to a lot of this online learning, the background incidentally is in online and distance ed, a key to a, a lot of it is getting that reciprocity from at least the, some others within the community. Uh, without that feedback, yes, I would say, uh, Naves, that's, it's key. Um, the level of commitment, the level of involvement is so much dictated by the, the degree of reciprocity and the degree of feedback that one gets, the quality of it. Uh, and probably more so from peers than even from the, the instructor. Um, because of learning being a social process, which leads me into the following. So, you know, just what, what am I thinking coming out of all of this? Um, this is what I came up with. Three keywords, uh, challenge, motivation, and uh, commitment. Now, to the challenge, to me, it was evident that for me to learn anything, um, I need to see a benefit to knowing it. And if that can't be made clearly to me, I'm a typical adult learner. I need to see or I want to see some benefit. Uh, that's not true of everybody. Some, some of us have altruistic dr drive to, to learn, but for some of us who've got already other pressing commitments for our already limited time, we tend to be a, what I call a guerrilla learner. We want to go in, get what we want, in many cases out. And uh, it's a lot more demanding, a lot more challenging if uh, that might be a partial criticism of the CMOOC is for a lot of people that that level of chaos that Vance is referring to can be a pretty tall order for a lot of adult learners, unless it's made clear just what sort of scaffolding they're going to need to use uh, to realize it. Um, but I really appreciate the deeper understanding that, that comes about, and particularly when I get a chance to share my ideas, test those ideas, and even negotiate those ideas with others. So that was one element of reflection on that. Um, and then moving on to motivation, it's it's evident to me in reflecting on the whole thing. I'm best motivated when 
learning is relevant. I don't think anything is going to come as too much of a surprise to anybody here, but realizing it in an online capacity is quite challenging. Relevant, meaningful, and social. There are a good number of skeptics out there already who, who, who will tell, who are openly uh, saying it's not possible to do online, and thus they, they've categorically ruled out online learning as being possible because they don't believe that social aspect is there. Um, I don't think that's true. I don't think I well, realized that in, in most of the MOOCs in some form or another. Okay, and then the third point was this whole matter of commitment. Um, I think it goes back to uh, Vance's point about, and others who've made the point as well, about the need perhaps for some discomfort uh, to expect it with learning, that uh, facing the fact that in order for you to really learn anything, that's, there's going to have to be a, a level of discomfort uh, to struggle to put it into a context that's meaningful to you. Um, and I believe that I've been able to realize that through the, through the various MOOCs that I've been involved with, but those that have been most successful for me have been those that have they've challenged me, they've motivated me, and they've demanded a, a level of commitment from me because I've, I've found them that I can learn something that's uh, meaningful and yet there's still a, a risk of perhaps failing if I don't if I don't commit any time to them if that makes any sense and so I thought I would leave Vance with uh, a record of what I promised him as an example of some of that pressure to succeed and avoid failure um, Realizing two badges for the multi MOOC people here. Now, I know that Vance has already received the participant badge and the presenter's badge because I sent those to him earlier. And I'm, I'm certainly in a position now to, to issue those um, to those who warrant being issued a badge. And that's essentially my short reflect piece on. Uh, my experience over the last six weeks with the various MOOCs that I've been involved with. Yeah, I'd agree. It's a lot of fun making badges. The, but it's a challenge, too, to make them really, really meaningful and uh, not superficial. We could we could have a, a whole other session on what would make those badges. Actually, we already have. Uh, that's what you talked about. What, yeah. How we can make them meaningful and give them credibility and credential and uh, put some uh, imprimatur behind them, some gravitas behind them. And, um, and, and also, they'd have to have criteria, so we'd have to think that through in advance. And Nellie does that. She's I, mean, I filled out a profile on one of her... Moodles, and I got a badge. Wow, I was so I was really chuffed at the time. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not sure what more to add there. Sorry, <laughs> and Nina's comment there. I love it. <laughs> About getting badges, is that the comment, Nina? <laughs> yes, I, I'm. It's not a panacea. It's not a silver bullet. Uh, there are certainly Critics of badges, uh, they make some valid points, um, and but there's a fair there's a fair bit of momentum behind this concept, and uh, there's a lot of good work happening with it as well. Uh, how we proceed, my I suppose we can take questions. We can read the text chat and we can take questions there. But <coughs> nice, uh, Nelly, if we could give mics out to people who raised a hand and wanted to say something. And in particular, I, I wanted to find out if, from the people here, we've got about 15 minutes or so, if, um, if they've had any interesting learning experiences, something that really resonated with them. Because I know a lot of people
sorry, the head, the head coordinator, the, the chairperson of the uh, Electronic Village on Long. And so a lot of them were in EVO. Um, I've been missing quite a lot of little books free because I've been so busy trying to prepare for all the things I've been doing. And as I've in EVO, I've had to miss. I know that this learning is going on all the time, and some people might have grabbed a bit of that elephant, you know, and uh, as it went whizzing by their fire hose. So uh, it would be nice to hear from them. What did they learn? What did uh, this, if you can think of one thing that's really something cool you learned, or somebody that really influenced you, or you think deserves some uh, mention, you know, as being one of those superstar teachers. Um, it would be nice to hear from individuals on that. Well, yesterday was a really exciting day. We had uh, an EVO, Moodle for Teachers EVO showcase. Uh, it was almost two hours with um, over 50 presentations. Most of them were required, but they didn't get a badge this time, which was really interesting because they did get badges for the, yeah, for the five weeks, for each of the weeks, but they did uh, really want, and some of them couldn't manage to do it on in time, to get their two minute minutes videos so. capturing if, um, what they've what they learned and it was amazing one of the participants even sang a interesting song interesting learning experience is something that really you know um i think it was frank of, sinatra i, know a lot of people, <laughs> I yeah. moodled my Sorry. way i mean she was amazing from serbia so uh the head participants the, got the going i think the, as a result uh, of the like badges it was like something so they a, became a very very EVO. you talk about star EVO. teacher performers i would say I've, I've star participants uh, because, because they so were amazing so star learners I've been doing in, as a, uh anyone in EVO, i've had to miss <laughs> i know star, that this learning is going on all the time Yay. Some people might have grabbed a bit of that elephant, you know. And, yeah, that's uh, what it's all about. Whizzing by their it's not the teachers, so, it's the participants that are the stars. This, this, because what will we do really, without them? Something cool you, you know, learn. Think about or it. Somebody or nothing. Really influenced uh, you, or you think deserves some uh, mention, you know, as being one of those superstar <laughs> teachers. Uh, so uh, nice I'm going to pass on the uh, mics. Just uh, give me an indication here. Just. Uh, there's no image of a mic, but give me a thumbs up if you'd like the mic and I'll just uh, pass it over to you. I can actually do it to everybody, but we might be echoing because I'm not sure that everybody has um, a headset. So all you need is a headset, basically. There's a hilash. Uh, let me just move this so I can uh, give uh, the participants rights. Okay, so I know that um, Hassan, most, I think most people have their mics because I know they've been using it uh, to create lots of videos. So I'm just going to pass the mics around, okay, and just uh, your input on what you've learned in the Evo se sessions. Uh, Shub Shubha is here. I learned to pronounce your name. <coughs> and let's see. Something you think of that's really that you that learned was, that one of my points the eco encourages is that start is within the participants, you know. Change your that's practice. that's exactly the kind of thing that, uh, you know, that, that yeah, go ahead. Kind of learning is you know, there's a lot of people, there are a lot of people here who have learned some really cool things, you know, and, and uh, it's just nice to hear the story. So if you have that's, any, your yeah, that's who it's for. Okay, I'm just passing on the mics. Let's see if we get anybody here. They're adding in the chat, but um, I don't see anybody responding to the mics. Oh, there, Hassan. Hello, Hassan. Your mic is open. Yeah, Nevis has been very uh, in the text chat. He's, I don't know, would you like to 
take the microphone. You, you said that he's just been learning things he would like to pass on. Knives to is yes, that's exactly. is Australian. <coughs> well, she I think she lives in Italy now. Yes, she does. <laughs> She's There's originally from Australia. I can, there, really, I passed on the mic to you. You learned that I need really it's would, open. that would help you in your practice. It'll help, help you change your practice. There, That's I can the, hear you and I can see the, the bottle kind of there. Is that water? That, uh, Sorry. Yeah, the, the, I'm, I'm, kind of oh, is it? Hello, is, my dear people, soul sister. <laughs> Great really to see you. Cool Did you realize things, you were putting Yeah. It's just nice to hear the stories. Um, sorry, have I haven't any, participated in chance. any of the Evos or the Moodles lately because I've been so busy with face-to-face uh, -face at school here. We've started up a whole new projects running around the high schools, etc. But um, my impression about the badges or the certificates or going back to this, the Moodle, I think, is fantastic. The, the Moodle, the Moots, sorry, the Moots are fantastic because they're a great way to learn. Yeah, oh, you know, they... we need mics. We need mics, mics. It's echoing. Okay, I took off anybody who's echoing. Sorry about that. Get your mics. No, you're fine. Go ahead, uh, Neves. Okay, so basically, for me, teaching. Yeah, is Neves all about has been very uh, open in the text chat. He's, I don't know, Neves, would you like to? take the microphone he, he said that he's just been learning things he would like to pass on to his students and yes that's exactly what someone is trying to tell us so as a teacher i'm aware if i've got students in front of me then i'm going to, that i'm naturally going to have students that are going to be different levels hi dr different hi dr ways of apprehending what i'm saying so i'm always looking at ways oh yes Communicate yeah. Okay, sorry. To be able to also Didn't realise you were putting on the uh, the um, video as well. Um, sorry, I haven't participated in many of the Evos or the Moodles lately because I've been so busy with face-to-face uh, -face at school here. We've started up uh, whole new projects running around the high schools, etc. But um, my impression about the badges or the certificates or going back to this, the Moodle, I think, is fantastic. The, the Moodle, the MOOCs, sorry. The MOOCs are fantastic because they're a great way to learn. No, you're here, you're here. Well, it's just that it's so wonderful listening to you. You have no idea how inspiring it is to listen to you. You know, you could go on talking and I would just listen. I would think, I'm okay, got a mic on. That's why when people tell me they need information, I say, well, I just enjoy listening okay, so to some people. And I'm not really thinking, For me, you know, teaching is all okay, about I got one, I got being two, I got open. Three. All it's, the time to understanding you know, how that. people it's are receiving the information. You know, we all know that information. it's so it's difficult to be able to apprehend what someone is trying to tell us. And learning. So as a teacher, I'm aware that if I've got students in front of me, then I'm going to, that I'm naturally going to have students that are going to be different levels and different ways of apprehending what I'm saying. So I'm always looking at ways to be able to communicate something easily across and to be able to also perhaps get the students more motivated to want to learn and the flip and blend idea is also very good or the blend class I prefer actually because it gives the students a way to be able to go back and do something on a, on a PC, on a computer that nowadays I really think that if someone says to me, if a student says to me I don't have a PC or I don't use a computer, I really have to laugh and think where are you, you know, um, because really everything happens on the internet. Minded, um, or their colleagues in other countries, and be able to that's um, any. I feel like I'm lost in the discussing, uh, water, water vortex here. <laughs> okay, uh, hardware that they're talking about, or software, whatever, but they also need to be able to interlace that conversation oh. with a little bit of cultural knowledge. And I'm not saying that it has to be so difficult, but reading the newspaper and, be, uh, and being able to. Uh, get students to understand how easy it is to be able to read the newspaper okay. and get the information or listen to various news items across the globe or use their smartphones 
when they're lazy to get I, to actually... I totally work. agree. I think that, and, and, and I think it's so important that as teachers, we constantly question what we're doing and question ourselves and question our knowledge. And also it's important that we do read uh, the newspapers and keep up with what's really happening. You know, sometimes I talk to a teacher and they have no idea what's happening in the world other than their little town community. And I think that's so sad because it's important to know what's happening in your town. Yes, by all means. But it's also important to understand what's happening worldwide. It's important to be able to get that information and then relay it into a classroom, especially um, if you're teaching high school students or if you're teaching even um, adult students in businesses that need to be able to, to converse with other uh, like-minded um, or their colleagues in other countries and be able to just not only talk about business and talk about the no, no, no. part that they're discussing, uh, the technical features of the piece right, thank you. Uh, hardware uh, that Helena, they're talking you, about or software or whatever, but they also like need to, to be able anything. to interlace that conversation with a little bit of cultural knowledge um, and I'm not saying that it has Tom to be so difficult you know, but reading the newspaper and being, and being able to webcam, uh, eyes, get students you know, we don't really see to understand eyes. We kind of see their how faces, easy it is to be able really to read a newspaper eyes because, and well, get the information or listen screen, to so, various yeah. news it's, items um, across the globe or use their smartphones when they're lazy to get to actually buy a newspaper and and be able to keep in touch with what's happening. And teachers should be able to use this information in classrooms and get students to be able to talk about it and put their knowledge it's Neves. Uh, like of Neves, English, Neves. Like, because I'm an English teacher. I'm a good teacher. learner, right? So get their knowledge Neves. of um, no, but English you told me once, grammar Neves. and be able to oh, use it to Neves. discuss Neves. and talk about okay. uh, simple things, simple items that would make it sound so natural so that they know that learning a language is exactly the same as speaking your own native tongue, which is sometimes what we teachers forget and we just keep telling our students to just repeat what they have in front of them or from a grammar book rather than get it to become natural. It has to, the second language or the third language has to be as natural as our first language. Am I boring anyone? Okay, first of all, I teach at also through Wiz IQ online. So I have students from all over the country in Italy, from the north to the south. And um, in Australia, I was born and bred in Australia, did all my schooling in Australia, but now I live here in Italy and teach in Italy. Uh, what I get, what I um, find, thank you, Thomas, you're so cute. Uh, what I find with the internet is the fact that there's so much information but sometimes students have no idea even how to just do a simple search. So uh, sometimes I have a class simply on yeah. understanding. I'd like to ask Nive a question. She mentioned at the yeah, end of uh, you know getting students to, to be able to Neve. compare information. Whatever, it's okay. It's okay. It's Nevis, but whatever, it's fine. Facebook and using Nevis. Twitter like and that's it. Uh, good. Good. Thank you, Tom. Getting students to learn languages, uh, real, you know, means they need to communicate meaningfully with one another. And so the internet, the things we're doing right now, play right into that kind of thing. You know, you can you can connect your class to other uh, other cultures. Could be target language cultures, or could be other people studying history or whatever. But do you do that in uh, in Australia? Australia, do you have a lot of, do you do, uh, how do you use the internet to do the things that you were talking about, get students interested in other cultures and uh, uh, kind of things well, to based, Okay, first of all, I teach also through WizIQ online, so I have students from all over the country in Italy, from the north to the south, and um, in Australia, I was born and bred in Australia, did all my schooling in Australia, but now I live here in Italy and teach in Italy. Uh, what I get, with, what I um, find, thank you, Thomas, you're so cute. Uh, what I find with the internet is the fact that there's so much information, but sometimes students have no idea even how to just do a simple search. 
So uh, sometimes I have a class simply on understanding how to use the search bar and how to open and close secondary windows, etc., to be able to compare information. Uh, sometimes students are great at maybe using Facebook and using what's it called Twitter and it, all these other wonderful social networks, which are fantastic and you know are a, a wonderful way of communicating. And I stress with my students to to do use it and to be able to also use comments in English, which I think is important. But the other thing is sometimes they don't use the internet. Like even for example, the um, MOOCs. There are other MOOCs available that, uh, and some of these MOOCs will, would have been wonderful for some students to participate in, as well, even just for listening rather than thinking, oh, I have to actually, you know, use it to or participate in doing the, the tasks. It's sometimes it's just important to listen. Listening is so important, and listening through the internet is great. I use many varied websites um, for students like British Council Learning English, um, VOA, Voice of America Learning English. There are so many websites that, and of course, are you also are you also mentioned like um, Sally Terrell, I forgot her first name. Anyway, so many, there are so many blogs out there as well with teachers that prepare their own material that students can, Shelley Terrell, that's it that can go and have a look and there's so many fantastic, through the MOOC I actually discovered even more like Colo Learning with uh, Jason Levine and, and the music element. And, yeah, I got um, in, but, um, which is Nina, great, Nina, which I never Nina, thought of, you, you know, because that was I'm Nina. not musically oriented but there's no there. harm in using uh, music, she, uh, actually it's quite took fun away her, uh, it doesn't webcam. mean that Nina, someone like me that can't sing. Even if I, I, I you find know, it, on the um, firing squad line, um, nice so my life. But see. why not so use Nina, it? There's why not use the material that's out there, your, and uh, also videos, um, movies, etc. I've been using webcam. movies and videos in lessons okay, for about Nina fifteen years, and I remember Nina? ten, twelve years okay. ago, teachers telling me uh, that I else? was crazy Sorry. to use um, English movies to teach English with. But yeah, I found that time, no you know, problem. kids. Some of the students today still remember oh, she's what trying. I taught I them she, seven, she eight, was, nine years ago through the uh, film. Okay. All you know, right. some Go of ahead, the uh, cliches. Um, because for, for us was English by... people, we watch movies or okay. we've uh, yeah. grown up with um, Play Go It ahead. Again, Sam, or, uh, you know, Casablanca, and we've picked up all those lines there and it's are. become part of our language. But someone who, le who learns English as a second or third language has no idea of what all these... Um, cliches that we picked up mean unless we show them and introduce and them see to uh, you know play as uh, a played so against them or good thinking 99 do you remember uh, that one uh, yeah that's why Can anyone um, think uh, where I, that came from oh there we are Someone hello else is that um, i'm wondering if Shubha, it'd, i believe it'd be nice to get other people who is that? Uh, in hello possible i'm not sure how much Go. time we have uh, yes, that's yeah, somebody Shubha. popped in and then Hello. popped out again. Hello. How are you? I I enjoyed I enjoyed yes I enjoyed your um, okay. your I didn't tell you yesterday yesterday I enjoyed. Thank you very much. We enjoyed your short video yesterday so much and your voice came through so nicely so I thought it'd be nice to hear you again. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I actually just finished watching the uh, the uh, recording, so it took a really long time. But I just finished watching that, and that's how I got the link. I think she's trying. I think class. I think Nina is um, trying so to I talk. Actually, uh, came in late, so I'm not really sure what we're doing here. And <laughs> but, but there I'm she is. And I have a mic and a camera. Um, but uh, my um, just to continue with what. Um, I was talking about, yes, it's my first time uh, in um, any kind of online collaborative medium. I've been teaching for, for many years now, but it's uh, always been in a classroom. And uh, so uh, I'm really learning. I'm learning a lot, and uh, it, it, it's been fun. It's been Not fun gone again. Uh, to be a student. It's been really fun. Uh, yes, yes, I did. Uh, it finished the course yesterday. 
Uh, so it is really nice. Uh, I cannot wait to join more classes. You know, I, I'm amazed by. I didn't actually ask for time. it, but uh, <laughs> I look like I'm on. Uh, there's anything else that I can talk about? Yeah. Hello. I. I'm good. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, um, I am. I have uh, started for the last year. I have started um, um, sh showing the children videos. Um, so what I do is I've been making videos. And Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I actually just finished watching the uh, the uh, recording. So it took a really long time, but I just finished watching that, and that's how I got the link to this class. Um, so I actually uh, came in late, so I'm not really sure what we're doing here. And <laughs> but but I'm on and I have a mic and a camera. Um, but uh, my um, just to continue with what um, I was talking about. Yes, it's my first time uh, in um, any kind of online collaborative medium. I've been teaching for for many years now, but it's uh, always been in a classroom and. Uh, so uh, I'm really learning. I'm learning a lot, and uh, it, it's it's been fun. It's been fun uh, to be a student. It's, it's been really fun. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, I did uh, finished the course yesterday, uh, so that was really nice. Uh, I cannot wait to join more classes. Slow internet connection. Oh, okay. So I'm. Um, I can pass the mic on unless uh, there's anything else that I can talk about. Do you think you'll lose use online environments with your students, or do you already? So, uh, yeah. Um, I am. Um, I have uh, started for the last year. I have started um, um, sh showing the children videos. Um, so what I do is I've been making videos, and um, I use the videos. I email link to the children so that they can watch the concept. So I teach math and English uh, writing. Uh, I use the videos mainly for teaching math concepts. Um, so what I find is the children who are, are little uh, are slow learners, uh, they do really well uh, when they get to watch the video again at home. And uh, so that's the kind, it's not, I, I, I learned that what I have been doing is actually called blended, <laughs> uh, blended <laughs> classroom. Uh, so that I came to know through this, through this program, through this class. But uh, that has been very, very, so that is what kind of motivated me to make it more, um, uh, to, to do more online tools. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm trying to use your to what but going to okay do you hear me Vans? hello uh, uh, slow internet connection oh okay what I learned from this year's evo session I noticed the uh, number of sessions is increased. I noticed that there are many interesting sessions, but we are restricted only by choosing two sessions. I always um, choose for myself something new. In this year, I was in multiliteracy years, and I was very happy. And for what, always I am in the session called Business English. What I can say, Business English I am in duration of three years. I understood that the team of teachers is a community too. It is not enough to say them or to criticize them by from Europe. We participants must be not be shy, must be encouraged by our teachers, prepare a good presentation and be invited. And I am very happy that uh, I am invited to next busy conference in Austria, in Graz, with my presentation how Business English in Uzbekistan can encourage or attract more international tourists to Uzbekistan. I am very happy. Also, I understood that we must be not passive. This year I said to Iroda, 
a very important person in higher education. She's a dean at National University, and she was in two sessions. Now, if you see, in um, this session are three people from Uzbekistan, me, Iroda, and Gulnoza from very far Karshi. It's a 1,000 kilometers from Tashkent. And I hope the next year I will tell more about Evo session. But someday I hope to get some group of uh, uh, moderators in Tashkent. Because the closest friend of Vance, closest friend of our um, Mr. How it is? James, Mr. Kirken, very often visit Tashkent. Why I spoke about certificate? If I had had certificate in my head, I can demonstrate to Kirken that I'm very educated person. You see, I get many certificate. Never he even greeted me being in Tashkent. He knows all people who never was in the training, but me, always in the training, always in the training. She even didn't know me, but I am a very Thank educated you. person, and I am business-oriented, and I get two certificates from Evo Station, why so? Uh, Hassan, even they uh, cannot like mm, say, thank you very much, like Halima, for your time oh, being in the station. Thank you very much for organizing training for us. Never. Never I heard. In our culture certificate is very important, yes. If I get I will say see, I obtain it new knowledge. This year I wanted very much <coughs> to thank thank you to uh, people like Claire. She's a wonderful teacher. She can organize wonderful team. Only one thing why very close to them. I know I work at in Germany. Thirty minutes to Dusseldorf. 30 minutes to uh, Netherlands, where are other, no, five participants from five continents, I said. Because business, business English is very important in all continents. And business English is different. Uh, you know, when you live in, uh, working in the Islamic countries. For example, in our Islamic banks, we have no unity payment, we have no interest rate. How can they um, uh, explain that? They cannot understand that. Therefore, they must get trainers from all continents. It's my wish only. And uh, long live ever. How it is this? The king is dead. Uh, long live the new king. Okay. Um, the ever is over. This year ever is over. Long live the new. I think uh, uh, this I'm this meeting. Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Does it work? Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> so I think um, the uh, the late motif of this session was about super teachers uh, teacher entrepreneurs and i think that's that the um, that's the movement we are now uh, ex um, experiencing so those who are participating in this session they all are uh, either part of MOOCs or they started MOOCs like uh, nelly like vance uh, and uh, super teachers, they um, are lifelong learners, and they know how to equip their students, uh, become learners, and um, learners, independent learners, because online teaching is about independent learning. And I think MOOCs, a good example of uh, how teachers, uh, super teachers, equip students how to uh, search for information, how to organize it, how to manipulate, how to reflect on information through blogs, through back channels. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm grateful for being part of these events. <laughs> because 
because I feel I am a lifelong learner. Like, and um, I think that's what uh, uh, unites us: this passion Tom, for learning. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's Nelly. not. Tom, uh, about Nelly is about learning. Uh, Tom, and Tom Hodgers we has share been our on, and I'm not kidding, uh, for 20 hours for this Moodle for we, Teachers it, Evo 2014. Uh, uh, 20 I, I'm teaching hours. online for not a long time. Not one student and out I'm of the thousands right now, of that were in the uh, MOOC teaching with techno or, technology sorry, literacy and technology. Uh, in the Evo session, and I see how over 1,000, each uh, one of some them students are not comfortable because they don't and see a teacher. And Tom was a wonderful bad cop. That's in traditional what he was called. Sense. He was the I guy with the read, them, read, read. And I think uh, what uh, it is, Abhilash I give them will be able to, to say more. In Thank you. So Abhilash, I'll uh, let you speak and it's, about your it's, experiences. It's, in the beginning, it's uncomfortable. But the more they do it, mm -hmm. the uh, more comfortable mm -hmm. they become. And they seem to be enjoying it because like, mm -hmm. just reading their blogs, yes, and you, are, you can very. see Thank that you. they mm -hmm. learn and they share mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. reflect on themselves mm -hmm. how they will use the tools they learn about in their own classrooms. Mm -hmm. So I really am happy to be part of this movement and um, thank you very much, teachers, superstars. Teacher entrepreneurs, <laughs> long live teacher entrepreneurs. Okay, thank you very much. Who else is waiting there? Online courses. That's what I plan to do. And the kind of learning that I have been through in Moodle for teachers, it has been very rewarding. As I, I had written in my chat, oh. there was a point I thought of withdrawing from this uh, Moodle for Teachers, but that was Nelly's support, that was the, uh, Thomas' support, they pulled me on, and I finally, today when I saw the badge for the last week, that means the course completion of badge, wow. it was really reassuring. And I am committed to love more, and whenever there is a cause, to do something online for any community across the world. Hello. Am I audible? Am I audible? Am I audible? I have already got six. Okay. It has been it has been a great experience for me to be uh, with uh, Dr. Nelly, uh, Thomas, and uh, all my facilitators for Moodle for Teachers. As many of you might have guessed, I am not a teacher inside the classroom. I was teaching earlier for quite some time, 20 years, but nowadays I am an educational administrator. Help bent upon learning something for online teaching and learning so that I will be able to make use of that for designing, developing and delivering online courses. That's what I plan to do and the kind of learning that I have been through in Moodle for Teachers, it has been very rewarding. As I, I had written in my chat, there was a point I thought of withdrawing from this uh, Moodle for Teachers, but Dr. Nelly's support, Dr. Thomas' support, they pulled me on and I finally, today when I saw the badge for the last week, that means the course completion of badge, it was really reassuring and I am committed to love more and whenever there is a cause to do something Thank online you. for any also community across the world, the I would love to be a part of it completely free of cost. I will not be charging anything for any, I, I, I have already got six. For CO14. I have already got six. So thank you, thank you very much, so all of you. So I, I would always be there for whatever kind of work that you people, whoever is listening to me, give me feed for. I, I, I am a PhD in applied linguistics. I have done uh, my. I have prepared a lot of ELT materials when I was a senior faculty in Regional Institute of English yeah. Chandigarh, where VJIQ is located. Oh, here he is. So I, I learned a lot from my uh, former boss, Dr. Sharda Koshik, 
in RI Chandigarh and I, I think I would be able to apply my learning there in Chandigarh for these online programs. Since there are more people, so I, I should take leave of all of you now. Thank you, Dr. Nelly. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Thank you. Uh, I, I forget uh, uh, Stevens and all, all my friends who are there for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I don't know how many people are remaining standing. I don't think Tom is going to be remaining standing for very long. He's been here for 20 hours already. That's above and beyond. That's really great. So you, you don't have, you don't have other sessions tonight. Okay, anybody else? I'm going to have to be leaving soon just because I need to get dinner and getting late here. So if nothing happens soon, I might be saying good night in case this is being recorded. Thank you, Neve. Neve Thank for, you. Uh, Thank you so much, Van. And Jim, I guess Jim uh, talking to us. is not feeling well. Uh, thank you so much. I had to go answer the door in between. Sorry about that. Uh, there was my gardener was at the door. Not thank that there was anything to do, but he was there. And okay, um, so I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. And um, I think the highlight of the year, Vance, with everything that I do. By the way, on the fifteenth, we're starting. Fourteenth, we're starting a at, uh, uh, blog festival, spring yes. blog festival. Uh, so everybody's invited to the spring <laughs> something new. Hours, it's a spring there. blog festival. And, um, we hope it's going to be um, uh, see, ongoing. Any week. Uh, so uh, um, you're interested in blogging, and I think many people together. are. We'll have lots That's of presentations. Vance, you're invited to also present. Uh, and slash join the spring. Page, it's a three day app, festival. It. It's organized by uh, Sylvia Gonan, um, Shelly Terrell, and myself. Going, we're, we're always interested uh, in having people come present. I think it should be a lot us, of fun so a wiki, as actually. a festival, and I so uh, hope um, wiki and, uh, it'll be a nice way to start a uh, spring. Uh, ah, there, thank you, Tom. I think, no, that's the Moodle MOOC. There yes, to continue uh, the discussions, no, no well, events, maybe nothing for May, uh, for you're example. invited and everyone's I'll, invited I'll go to March go into the, uh, yeah, what's called the course feed, so we can taken. continue the discussions. But anyway, if anybody has I'm the link to the Spring Blog like Festival, you'll be people. hearing about it. So thank you very much for attending. SBF. Appreciate it very much. That's what the initials are, SBF. So come to the SBF. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yay! Yes, That's Veronica! Fine. Thank you, Veronica. Got it. Okay, thanks, Billy. Uh, there it is. There's the link, Vance, in the chat. You can also copy the chat, everyone, if you just uh, see copy chat. Vance, you can do the same. Copy chat. Can you see that? Okay, so copy the... Yes, I can't hear you too well. Must be hard of hearing. Let me turn on the volume. Oh, yeah, it was low. I lower it, sorry. Where do you copy chat? Uh, just above the chat with, with a list of uh, chatters, the chat, it says copy chat and then, oh, you still don't see it?
no, it's below the video actually. Depending where your video is, you'll see where it, I put you. You're straight in, in on my. Um, yeah, you can you can move the everything. You can dock it. You can move it. You can enlarge it. The list, the chat, and everything. You can make it larger right in the middle, and um, I'll be showing this uh, what are the because I am screen sharing this uh, recording it actually is a better word and then I'll be adding it to YouTube if that's okay with you I can also add it to Vimeo you know actually I'm finding Vimeo a lot better the HD, it looks better. Dates? It comes on quickly with uh, YouTube. It takes a while for it to to get the HD uh, full screen to, you know, to look wow. clear. It's kind of foggy at the beginning and then it kind of clears up. Anyways, um, Vimeo has a lot better. Uh, everything's better about Vimeo, actually, except that it's not that popular. Yeah. And you, you can add if you're using a Moodle. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Vince. And uh, see you tomorrow at our next session. Oh, I don't see it. I don't see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, chat. Oh. I don't know. I have to look it up. No, 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 no. Yeah. Above the chat. I saw you looking above the video. I got it. Okay. Bye. I got it on the clipboard. <laughs> Bye. Uh, I moved it. I knocked it. That's why I was having trouble. I need it. Yeah, I undocked it. So.